one of our YouTube subscribers asked, um, could you demonstrate how to paint ripples, ripples in water? Ripples in water. Well, maybe we could learn something else that might teach us ripples and maybe something else too. We always get in trouble when we start to paint an image as an image. So if your goal is painting ripples in water, chances are you're going to struggle a long time. You might not even make it work. And in fact, this subscriber says um, that she's having trouble with a painting. It's a sunset from a trip to Alaska. Uh, she describes it as fairly dark at sunset and there's some yellowish, yellow pinkish ripples on the water, but she's not sure how to paint them. Well, she's told herself right here how to paint them. If you are looking at the ripples in the water and you're calling them ripples in water, then that doesn't give you the information you need in order to know what to do to create a painting that shows ripples in water. It's one of those little contradictory things, or it seems to be contradictory, that we artists deal with all the time. You, you're not going to be able to paint, uh, to, to paint the image by focusing on the image, but you focus on what makes up the image. So rather than me showing you how to paint ripples on water, I want to show you how to look at ripples on water and, and take what you discover from what you look at and, and make it work for you so that you will be interpreting that. Well, okay, that's a long way of saying, all right, what do you have here? This is a photo she sent me of the, uh, uh, the ripples on the water that she's struggling with. What do you see? What you see here, uh, of course it tells us it's late in the afternoon, what you see here is you see the pink from the sky reflecting in the ripples. You see the dark from the sky reflecting in the ripples. What is the ripples? The, the light part or the dark part? It's both. And so what we have here then is, is we have, uh, first of all, let's look at the value of the dark. Just focus on that, nothing else. What do you see? You see the value of the dark getting a little bit lighter the closer it gets to this lightest part. That's one bit of information that's going to enable this to happen. You see the same thing happening over here on this side. All right, that's one bit of information. Now, what do you see as far as the light portion here? You see the light portion being pretty much the same color as you see right up in here, though not quite as saturated, a little bit more neutralized than you see up here. Then there's a third thing to look for, and that is the direction of the movement. You see how you have the main darks moving kind of in this direction, and then they sort of straighten out the closer they get to the horizon. You see that? You can see that the direction here, then the direction gets a little bit less of an angle here, and as it gets closer to the horizon here, it flattens out. So you've got three bits of information there that you can use. Now first, let's go to the color. Uh, on this particular one, and, and it will work in, in lots of um, uh, lots of lake paintings or, or ocean paintings where you have um, the images reflected in the water. We see those reflections because of the images around the water. So a lot of times you can take the two colors that you see and use those two colors intermixed into each other. Um, and, and in this case, that will work. Mainly though, observe the movement, observe the, the value, the value, especially the values of the dark, um, the direction of the movement, and actually what color is reflecting in that lighter part. So, what do we see? We see, oh, we see kind of a, a Payne's gray. Well, Payne's gray is leaning kind of towards blue. And what else do we see? We see this pinkish and we see the yellowish. Now, what we see reflecting in the water here in the photograph is more on the pink line. All right, now one way we could go there is take a color we know that when we mix white with it, it's going to turn into this, this character of pink. 
I know that cadmium red light will do that. So first of all, I'll take cadmium red light, put it right here on my palette by itself, and then I will mix white into it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do what I call a value line. Those of you who are who are studying our lessons with us know uh, how I use the value line as a very uh, effective way to control value in paintings. And what that is, as, um, as you see here, and I have a quick tip on that too, it's simply gradually changing the value. So we'll leave a little bit of that cadmium red light there, and I'll gradually change that value to a lighter version. So I've got kind of a gradation here of the value of the cadmium red light. All right, now, when that mixed enough, now I want to check here and see where in that value range do I see these colors. So one way to do that, I could do it on the back of the palette knife, uh, like this, where I pull the palette knife smooth, and then I hold the palette knife here. You see, I pretty much, it's a little bit lighter. I have it a little bit lighter than the colors that the, I'm seeing here. There's a variation of of this pink that moves from the pink into the blues and causing the purples here. But what we're seeing primarily reflected in the light here, if you look, are the pinks. So that's important information. Well, I'll get that a little bit darker, add just a little bit more of the cadmium red light into it here, like this. And let's try that again. All right, so now see, I'm closer now I'm closer to the pink I'm observing right here. Now this pink is the pink that's reflecting into the water. Now if I hold the pink right here though, what I observe is that the pink in the water is slightly more neutral. So what I can do there, now right here is the area for that pink, is slightly more neutral. Cadmium red light, ultramarine blue. So I'm going to go up into the ultramarine blue here and I'm going to create a value line of the ultramarine blue just very quickly. Now what I will want to do since um, cadmium red light is kind of a red orange so ultramarine blue is a uh, sort of a complement it serves well to, as a complement to cadmium red light they sort of neutralize each other all right, so now I can go into the same value area right here. Let's bring it right down in here because I don't need much. And let's mix a little bit of that. Mix a little bit of that with this cadmium red light. And just check it. Just check it. And that looks exactly like what I would need for the pink on the water. So if you can take the color that you see reflecting here, the color in the sky and use whatever color you're using for the water because they, those two are kind of mixed together so whatever color you're using to make the water um, add just a little bit of that into that color it should neutralize it so that you get this now I'll give you just a brief demonstration here to show you to show you how that actually works first of all because we're seeing this as kind of a gray blue it feels more like the Payne's gray I was referring to well, that means that we need to change the ultramarine blue to lean it more in that direction. And so we can do that. I'm just going to bring some of the darker ones so it's very, very dark right there. And I'm going to add a little bit of the cadmium red light into the ultramarine blue here. And that will change it to more, uh, to closer, clo to a color that is closer to that Payne's gray we're seeing. There it is right there and that's very very dark so it's probably a little hard to see. But I keep working in that until I can get it pretty close to, to that. Now one way I can check it, not add white to it but add this mixture. Because those are those two are mixing together. I can add that mixture and I can see that is pretty close. Maybe a little bit more of that red in there wouldn't hurt. So here we go. 
All right, so, so what am I doing here that could be universal for any lake scene or any ocean scene is you look at the color of the darkest part of the water. What color is that? That's the color you want to use for the darkest part of that water. And then you use the lighter colors, the colors that are reflecting into it. Those are the colors that you use to mix into it to create the lighter values of that dark. So that's what I'm doing here. All right, now I'm just going to give you a very brief, I'm not going to do the whole scene or anything. I just want to do just a brief little demo right here to show you uh, those principles and how they work. So I will use, uh, I'll start out with the dark. And so if we have this darkest dark, let's see if you're right here. That's not, that's dark, that's too dark. That's darker than what we see right there. So I'm just going to move right into the, Cadmium Red Light mixture and lighten that up just a little bit. Cadmium Red Light and White. There we go, right there. So that's a better, that is a closer value to what we're seeing right there. So you see what I did there? The color of the darker the water, and in order to lighten that color of the darker the water, use the color that's reflecting on the water, which would be, in this case, is the pink of the sky. So that's what makes it work. Now you see, as this darker moves closer to the area where more of the colors reflecting in is closer behind where the sun is actually going in I imagine uh, that gets a little bit lighter so you use this color this mixture to control that value and that is that is key now you see as I do that as I add a little bit more of that mixture in there then we begin to feel more of what this color is doing right here so I work those uh, back and forth into each other like that I'll leave a little space now I'm causing the movement or the direction of, of these strokes to change as I'm moving closer to where I am, where I would be if I were on that beach. And let's just put a little bit more dark right in here. All right, so let me see. I don't need to do a whole lot more to show you. I'm going to wash the brush now. Now, remember what I did before. What we need in the lighter part is that we need this color, but slightly neutral. That's what we'd observe right here. So, uh, be sure to get it dark enough. The tendency here would be to get this too light. Read it too light, you get it too light. So, that's a good reason to mix the colors and compare them to what you're looking at. If you're in plain air, you mix the color. You can hold it on the end of your brush or the end of your palette knife. Close one eye and you can hold it like this and compare with the color you're seeing in the landscape. An excellent way to, to find the right color. So it usually what happens there is that people will make the reflections too light. And maybe sometimes too saturated with color. So I'm going to move right up in here and pick up plenty of color on the brush because I've got dark paint there. I'm going to slightly neutralize slightly neutralize that color and now let's see I'm compare uh-huh I'm pretty close there so I'll work this color in between and you'll see how beautifully it works now as it goes in the distance you don't really see let me get that out right there as it goes in the distance you don't really see it you're seeing the reflection or we're seeing the actual reflection up closer in this area right here so we could just uh, use this method right here of moving the br brush back and forth for the movement of the water let's, let's we'll put some of this in and we'll put some dark back in to kind of show this, this direction and this direction that's the color right there and go back and get some of that dark color and you'll see how, how well it works it's already beginning to work. Don't want to overdo either one. So we need this. This needs to be a little lighter. So the key is keeping the dark part light enough and the light part dark enough, as well as using those colors reflected into each other. So let's see here. Now you can kind of see now, and of course the brush stroke I'm using is, is a back and forth, a back and forth brush stroke like this that is a good stroke to use when you're showing uh, ripples on water. So let's see, have I done enough of that so that 
you can get an idea. Is this good? We, we do have a little darker, a little darker contrast right here. Go by what you see. If, if there's stronger contrast, well then the darks get darker. Light stays pretty much the same. Uh, if there's not quite so strong contrast, then the darks are lighter. But the main thing is that you're using you're using those col colors mixed together. I think you can see right there how you can use this little, this little process. It's a matter of observing and of creating the colors on your palette that you see when you make those observations. So if you found this quick tip helpful, uh, we have a lot of full-length lessons, a lot of them dealing with color, in fact, on our website, dianemice.com, downloads and DVDs. And if you have something that you have struggled with, you'd like me to do a quick tip on, leave a comment right down here and tell me what it is, and we'll put it on the schedule. And there's your quick tip.